So this is our final section of questions, um, and this is on maths. And we, it says this week, we've been looking at converting units. And I started off by this very simple question, and it's there because it's, it's needed for the other two questions that we're doing. So look at this symbol, what does it mean? And I've put in a few different potential answers there because I thought there might be a little bit of variance about what children write. So that's that one. This next one is around us having to make a choice about what we actually want to do with the answer. So how much information do we want to draw out of it? Is it just that we want to check they can get it right? Or do we want to see how they get it right? And what I've done, as you can see here, look, I've got two different questions. Have a look at the question and write the answer in the box. Or have a look at the question and write your answer and show how you worked it out. Now, the chances are, if you're going to go for the second one of those you're probably going to click long answer and have a look at it yourself to see whether they get it right or not. You could attempt, of course, to keep it as a short answer and to write down exactly the steps that you think they would take, but you are running a quite a long, a big risk there of them not writing it exactly as you wanted it to, to see it. Anyway, so the question goes up, and I'm going to put the question as an image because I clipped it from White Rose, uh, and let's go, I think it was that one there. Uh, no, that's more tricky. That go for that one there. Okay, so um, here there are two questions. Now you might then say, um, add, put your answer with a comma between them, or you might just say you might actually clip this again and put this as, as two different questions. That's sort of up to you, really. Uh, let's see if I can crop it directly in here. Uh, no, to me you can have a look at that. Um, so let's imagine that I wanted the answer just to be in, in two separate sections, or the answers could be... No, actually pause that. Okay, so I've amended this question slightly now, so I've given them exactly what it could look like and then written that in the box there. Now, I have to say, I think probably you'd only do this with the older children who would probably understand your example given. Um, if not, you would probably just actually crop that as two separate questions and put them up there. So here's the final question then, and I add this as a text. I could add it as a choice, it depends on what you're doing, obviously. And um, it is, uh, so this one, let's imagine I wanted to find out whether the children really knew how to understand it, whether they really understood it and how to solve it. So um, solve this problem and type out how you solved it. And on that one, again, I upload an image that I cropped from White Rose. And, nope, got that one already. Oh, no. And there you go. So that's my um, problem. And I'm going to put that as a long answer. It's worth one point. And that's it. So that's where they can then write their answer. And they need to show how they solved it as well. Now, it, it doesn't have to be that way. I can just type in the answer. Um, and actually, I just realised I put 2.6 miles, and that was actually 2.5 miles. So let's make sure that's corrected. Uh, how do I do that? Okay, down. I'll have to add that in properly. Eva was um, 16 kilometres, and Ted was 2.5 miles. Add. So there you go. So that's it. That's all of the quiz done.